July is Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. And for each Sunday in July, I'm doing a preaching series at the intersection of mental and emotional health and the natural environment. And I've been working with parishioner Kirsten Reberg Horton, um, who's training to be a horticultural therapist, one who is at the intersection of mental health and nature um, on this preaching series. All of us know the story of the Good Samaritan quite well. In fact, people who are not even Christian at least have heard of the Good Samaritan. There are certain laws in our country called Good Samaritan laws, meaning that if you try to help somebody and something goes a little bit awry, it protects the one who was administering help. So the story of the Good Samaritan does not strike our ears the way it would strike the ears of the first people who heard it. As I said a couple of weeks ago, Jews and Samaritans were sworn enemies. They did not get along. So in ancient Palestine, during the time of Jesus Christ, there was no such thing as a good Samaritan. I want you to imagine either a group of people or an individual, when you think of that person or group of people, that you think there is not a good bone in their body. That is the image of the Samaritans from the Jewish standpoint. As a matter of fact, the priests in Jerusalem, the Jewish priests in Jerusalem during the time of Jesus, a little bit before, planned an attack to burn down the temple of the Samaritans. That is an act of terror. That is an act of war. So the fact that we call it the Good Samaritan is oxymoronic because during that time there was no such thing as a Good Samaritan. I want to retell this well-known parable that Jesus told but in the context of St. Ambrose and our nearest neighbor, the Walnut Creek wetland. Someone asked Blessed Martin Luther King Jr. about this story of the Good Samaritan around this question, who is my neighbor? And Dr. King's answer is anybody in the world who needs help. So your neighbor is not geographic, but anybody in the world who needs help. So here's the story of the Good Samaritan in St. Ambrose context, and I'm going to call it this oxymoronic phrase, the good catastrophe. There was once a very pristine nat natural habitat. There was a river that flowed into a wetland that was pure and clear as crystal. And the wetland did what it was supposed to do, just absorb water. In Walnut Creek, was so clear you could see t through it to the bottom. And in this wetland lived all types of animals. There were great blue herons. There were mink. There were this particular type of fish called a lamprey, which is both a saltwater and freshwater fish. It starts in the Atlantic. It swims upstream to freshwater like Walnut Creek. It lays its eggs and goes back downstream to the Atlantic. All of this natural, pristine area in Walnut Creek wetland. Then some new neighbors came. And these neighbors were colonialists. They were colonizers. And these were not good neighbors. These neighbors took sewage and dumped it into Walnut Creek. These not so good neighbors took garbage and trash and dumped it into the wetland. And the wetland, which was once pristine, began to be ravaged and entered the state of degradation. These same colonizers who did not treat the wetlands with care and love then courted off or drew part of the wetland and put oppressed people and made them live there, black people. So you had land that had been oppressed 
And now you have new neighbors in Walnut Creek who are oppressed people, black people. And these neighbors were different from the colonialist neighbors. These were good neighbors. And good neighbors do what good neighbors do. They looked out for the new neighbor. And so these new black neighbors began to take care of this natural area. They noticed that when they walked through the area, it smelled of sewage. They saw trash everywhere, so they began pulling trash out. Tires and mattresses and bed and all types of plastic. They then worked with the city to separate and cord off this Walnut Creek area to make it a protected space, an area that then became a park. And so the wetland, because of these new good neighbors, began to live and thrive. And now the new good neighbor of the resurrected wetland began to be a good neighbor to its old neighbors, the black community. And this new resurrected wetland that was a good neighbor then began to provide emotional and mental health for the black community. There is a practice that's called forest bathing forest bathing. And it is something that is very popular, particularly in Japan, but certainly in the Far East. And over the past few decades, a lot of research has been done around forest bathing. And forest bathing simply means entering a wood or wooded space for no other reason than to walk and enjoy. You're not trying to run to get your heart rate up. You're not trying to do any quote unquote exercise, but simply entering the space to walk or sit for at least an hour, 60 minutes to an hour and a half. And what science has proven, even Western science from the CDC and the NIH, is that being under tree canopy and forest bathing not only helps you physically, it helps you emotionally and mentally. That by forest bathing, your heart rate decreases. Your blood pressure goes down. But we've also studied and know that beta endorphins produced by the brain, beta endorphins produce natural opioids for the body. So by simply being outside under a tree canopy, being in a wooded area, being in a forest, being out in nature produces beta endorphins, which are the body's natural opioids, which is something we all need. There's a parishioner who lives, not a parishioner, but a, a, a neighbor, a geographic neighbor to St. Ambrose who lives in um, Rochester Heights. And I remember talking to this neighbor some years ago. She's into bird watching, and she's very good. Uh, if she hears a bird or takes her binoculars and sees a bird in this area, she knows what it is. And she was telling me that she struggled with high blood pressure. But she noticed that after she went bird watching, she just began to feel better. So she did her own medical experiment. Before she would go bird watching, she would take her blood pressure, go blood, uh, bird watching, come back, take her blood pressure again. What she found is that after watching birds, bird watching, her blood pressure decreased. As a matter of fact, she was consistent in this and did it so much that she had enough health to get off her blood pressure medication. This intersection between mental and emotional health and nature. What we're trying to do at St. Ambrose is to continue to be a good neighbor but to let the natural habitat be a good neighbor to us by providing therapeutic gardens, by providing horticultural therapy that can bring about the e emotional and mental wellness for the entire community, not only St. Ambrose, but all of Southeast Raleigh. 
That man who encountered Jesus asked, who is my neighbor? Dr. King answered by saying, anyone in the world who needs help. St. Ambrose, who is our closest neighbor? The Walnut Creek wetland. We have been a good neighbor to it. Let it be a good neighbor to us to bring about wholeness and completeness, not only for ourselves, but the larger community 